Excellent. There we are. Hi. There, brilliant stuff. Well, I'll, I'll get started by just explaining that um, obviously this is this is number three in the in the live Instagram or Instagram live chats that I've done, uh, and we've got a, a, an amazing special guest today, which will be I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so my name is Simon Medhurst, uh, author of Titanic Day by Day. I think we've all heard about that one. Um, and maybe we'll get a mention of somebody that's done a, done a forward for that book in a little, bit, in a little minute. Um, my great-grandfather was Robert Hitchens, who was uh, one of the quartermasters on Titanic. Uh, he was the helmsman, uh, one of the, the, the quartermasters that was there. And he was the one that was at the wheel when it hit the iceberg. He was at the at the helm. So that's, uh, if you want to call it a claim to fame, but um, that's that's where I am as a, a, a Titanic relative. Um, so obviously this is a, a, an opportunity for people to maybe send a question over through on the live Instagram as well. Uh, we've got 67, 68 people on already. So that's good. We'll hopefully that increase as we go along. Um, so today we invite... Renata Rojas, if that's said correctly. That's very good. I nearly said it the other way, but <laughs> I, would, I would explain that the J is, a, is, is an H, is that right? Is that how you would pronounce it? So it's Rojas. It, it's, it's a J, but you pronounce it like an H. Brilliant. Yes, phonetically. Yeah. Rojas. That's really. So um, Renata was born in Mexico City, based now in New York City. Uh, been diving all over the world. I mean, looking at when you look at your. Uh, resume of, of your life um, that puts my general job into, into insignificance but all the, the diving and uh, visited the wreck of Titanic which is why you're here today uh, with Ocean Gate Exploration. Uh, a member of the Explorers Club, a Royal Canadian Geographical Society. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit. So let, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself Renata then, then more than that maybe? Sure. Um, um, I was born in Mexico. I moved to the United States when I was uh, around 15, 16 years old. Um, I've been a scuba diver since I'm like 10 years old. So the, the ocean has always been my, my hobby since I'm a child and, and the fascination with shipwrecks. Uh, that's how things started. Um, I wanted to become an oceanographer and I wanted to find Titanic. Titanic had not been found back then, but I, I was ready to go into college and they found it. So I changed my career to banking. I was told that they were not going to go back. There were not going to be any more expeditions to Titanic and to forget about it. So I, I tried. I went into my banking career and when I was graduating from college, um, pictures started to come out. The, you know, they obviously went back. They started to make mm. a book, pictures, photo, photographs. Back then, we didn't have Instagram, so things were not instant. They yes. took a couple of years to actually go film, produce, mm. and publish. And now you find out right away. But back then, it was at least two years went by, and I was already graduating. So I couldn't really step into oceanography again and try to... Uh, to to get to to study eight years and be and, and go into a tectonic expedition. Um, so I realized by seeing uh, William F. Buckley come out of a submersible mm. in the in the New York Times that non scientists could go. And so I tried to find a way to go without actually studying to be a scientist or a PhD. Mm. And it took me 30 years to get into an expedition and, and go, actually a little bit less than that, but I, I, once I signed up to an expedition, that expedition was postponed and then ultimately canceled. Uh, then I tried again with uh, somebody else and that would have been postponed. And then finally, when I met Ocean Gate, um, they didn't even have a sub. There were had plans to go to Titanic, but I grabbed on to Stockton Rush for dear life, and I said, you're my guy, and I'm going to go with you, even if I'm old. And, uh, you know, we sub was finally ready. We had to test it, and another sub we, we had to be tested. Finally went on, then COVID happened, so we had delays. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a while to get there, but I, with patience and, and 
determination. Uh, you can definitely make things happen. I, I always dreamt of seeing Titanic and I, it, it's really hard to imagine that first feeling when you're finally on the expedition, you're finally on the ship. Yeah, I was going to say, what was your, what was your very reaction when, when they actually just said, yes, you can come? I mean, there must have been a point that, that they actually said to you, well, Renata, actually, yes, you can come. But you don't, you don't quite believe it at the beginning. Um, yeah. I, I call myself uh, patient zero because I was literally <laughs> the first one who uh, talked to Ocean Gate to say, I, I want to go. <laughs> yes. And, uh, the sub didn't even exist anymore. I mean, they, they, they were not going to get rid of me. <laughs> so initially, when they said, yeah, you're going to come with us, don't worry about it. It's, it was just, you have to be patient. It's not easy to build a submersible that goes that deep. Yes. Uh, the expeditions are not easy to organize, to get permissions for, to get the right people to do it. It's, it's very complex. Yes. Um, it, David Gallup from Woodsall back in the day told me once that people think that going to the North Atlantic is like getting on a cruise ship and coming back to shore and going on a tour. And it's nothing like that. It's, it's like going to Mars. Yes. Uh, yeah. Nothing is routine. Everything could go wrong. The weather, yeah. you're at the mercy of the weather and the waves. Uh, and then so you have when you went out, So when you went out, I assumed that the weather was just perfect? Well, or was it not quite that well, way? When the expeditions are 10 days, right. uh, it takes two days to, to go to site. Once you're on site, you have... Um, a good seven days, and then it's two All days right. to go back. And in those seven days, they plan two or three dives, okay. two definite, one extra if there's time. And it, it's really because of the weather. They have weather windows. Yes. Um, if the weather doesn't really allow you to put the submersible in the water and safely take it out of the water mm -hmm. and in the water and take people on the sub, then, then they scrub the dive and they wait for a weather window. Right, okay. So when did you, obviously you knew you were going, did you know when you were going that you would be going down? Is that, was that part of it? I mean, it, you, you know, you could have been obviously on the trip yeah. and been on the boat, but not actually be one of the ones that go down. Right. So was there a point where you knew you were going down? Was yeah. that near the beginning or was it only nearer as you got nearer the time itself that you thought, actually, I am going to go that, down? That was towards, towards the end. Um, right. To make things a little bit more dramatic. Uh, the first year I went, I decided to go at the very beginning. I knew that I was probably not going to dive, right. but I yeah. wanted to be there when the submersible, when. which is a, a yeah. ultra modern submersible, one of a kind. Yeah. You know, the first time that it was going to go down to Titanic, I, I, it was a historical moment to be able to witness yes. that it's a submersible got to the bottom and it was going to be able to take people like me in, in, in it was going to be open it literally changed the industry yes. uh, of submersible diving and I wanted to be there for that moment and when that submersible got to 300 feet from mm. the bottom I actually started crying yes it was, we were in the comms room all listening to the comms there was three people in the sub pilots all of them the first time they went down and they, um, and once they were close, that I knew they were going to land, yeah. and they were going to land on debris field, where you mm. really realize that this is going to be a reality, mm. even though you're not in the sun. Yes. I started crying. So that was year one. Year two, <laughs> year two, I was uh, going to be in mission, five, in mission three, and I got stuck in airports in July 4th oh. with Canada Day, July 4th. Yes, yes. And uh, bottom line, I didn't make the ship. Oh, they had to yeah. leave without me because yeah. I was stuck. So I actually missed my own week, my own spot. Right. To go. Okay. And uh, Ocean Gate had to move some things around and give me some room in, in week five. So okay. I, I knew I was going to go in week five, but it's the last week of the expedition. Mm. So if the weather doesn't cooperate, that's it. Don't go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, 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 I didn't want to get too excited at the beginning. I didn't want to get my hopes up. I wanted to just say, we're here. We're here to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, it's fine. I'll go next year. And that's how I approached it at the beginning. I just, uh, I, it was too emotional for me to not, to get too excited. Yes. 
So once right. I was told you're gonna go tomorrow. Yes. You you don't believe it. You're just like, what? Wait a minute. I, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> you know, you've been waiting, been waiting your all this time, life. then you're not ready. <laughs> But you're not ready for it when they tell you that is your turn. What, what do you mean? I have to sleep. Um, <laughs> so how did you get on with things like sleep and that? Because obviously, you the, 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 you know, the night so, before, you don't, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you it's try, just like, but you, you, you don't. Uh, you end up very, being very tired and very, very, uh, the adrenaline keeps you going. It's just, it's a, yeah, it's, so what are things about, um, let's just go, let's, let's, let's take a trip off of Titanic journey at the moment. Let's go right back to the beginning. What got you interested in Titanic right from the beginning? Because obviously yeah. you, you, um, you obviously you've had a desire in it and I think you've watched over for like 30 years so that you could, yeah. to do, could, you could do this. But what, what was it right at the beginning that actually said, right now I, I've got this, desire yeah. to do with Titanic at all in the first place yeah. because obviously for me I started collecting Titanic stuff when I was in my early 20s yeah um but didn't know I was actually related till my middle 40s oh so so for me I had a, an interest in Titanic as a story but didn't know I was actually related till I was 45 so then all of a sudden I go from a collector to a relative and it my mind's blown oh my god so yeah. So that's that's sort of um, for me, um, and I don't even know really where it started, apart from maybe a library book that I picked up, and then yeah. after that I was totally hooked on Titanic. Yeah. But but for you, obviously, you've gone a step further because you've not just thought about Titanic; you actually want to go to Titanic, which is slightly different. Yeah. So what what actually got you in in the first place? What drew you in? I was already fascinated with things on the water, right? Uh, shipwrecks, airplanes, whatever, for that because of diving. I saw the movie and I to remember in black and white. Right, yeah. Um, on the television one night in the story. I just thought I'd bring that along. Why was that it? One. <laughs> yes, that one. That pulled me in. Yes. Uh, it was the mystery of something so big disappearing. The mm. greatest tragedy, maritime tragedy in historical times. It changed the whole industry. It was historical. And it was like, it was not supposed to sink. It was unsinkable. Mm. How can that happen? And then it disappeared completely. Nobody knew where it was. I mean, yeah. like, look, they kept looking for it. Nobody found it. Jack Grimm mm. tried, I don't know how many times. So I, I was like, technology is going to get better. Yes. Someday we're going to be able to find us. And unfortunately, I was not the first one with that idea. And somebody beat me to it. <laughs> but... Uh, do I you remember went... it being? I assume you remember it being found. Then, do you remember oh, it? I, September. You've been, you're, September second. So, what point? So, what point did you actually want to actually? You know, obviously, you saw the film, but were you before that you wanted to get to Titanic? So, is that always what you wanted to do to go to Titanic, rather yeah. than just, you know, you, that's been your desire right through? Yeah. The movie, to give you context, the movie I need to remember. I must have seen when I was twelve. Right. So, so I, they found it when I was 18. Yes. So I had already been collecting like you. Okay. And, uh, I was doing all my research papers on about Titanic, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, any history uh, class that I had, my paper, my essay was Titanic. Right. I started to accumulate, you know, the few books that they had because there were very few yes. books back then. There was nothing. Now, there's hundreds, yeah. Now there's like a million. <laughs> So I collected a few. I actually did read all of them. I don't, you know, have large collection, but I, I yes. haven't read all of my books. Um, and, you know, as, as you do a little bit of research in how do I find Titanic and you go to talks to, about oceanography, mm. to be honest, I hated physici physics and chemistry. Right. I was not going to be a good oceanographer <laughs> at all. Um, but that's what I needed to do in order to, to get into a research ship and go do something like that. I mean, I find that so amazing I, to think that you've, you know, you had a goal yeah. and that actually you took on something that wasn't really something you maybe would have enjoyed doing, but mm -hmm. because you had a goal in mind, yep. nothing was going to sway you, with, even if it was a subject that wasn't really your cup of tea. Right. Um, but, but, but you would, you I, would I actually do that. people in me don't like banking either. It's my job now. <laughs> <laughs> but to be 
Honestis was going to get me to see Titanic. Once I saw William F. Buckley in a sub, I knew that all I needed was money. I'm yeah. back in the 80s. Yeah. If yes. anybody here is in the 80s, you know, you had, you know, all these movies about millionaires, if they yes. were bankers. I thought I was going to be one of those <laughs> investment bankers too. But I, I didn't get millions. I am not a millionaire. I am not rich. I'm just a normal person with a job that had to make sacrifices throughout my career in yes. order to save. And I think that's encouraging, Do you buy that house? isn't it? Yeah. Do you put your money, you, you take a, a little bit of bonus, you take your tax refund and you save it. Uh, instead of buying clothes or a car or travel yeah. or, or you name it, there were yeah. big, what college did you go to? What do I go to business school? Yeah. Sorry? with do I go to business school the only reason I went to business school is because I needed an MBA in order to get a good job that yes. would get me enough money to say <laughs> to go to Titanic I think if I had um, the hat I'd take it off I think um, yeah. you know I think you're very much an inspiration yeah. for people who who have got um, maybe want to do something specifically uh, doesn't necessarily have to be Titanic but just have a desire to go towards something to focus on that and, and work yeah. towards it and, and what you did is amazing um, it is a lot of money. I know yeah. it's like a lot of money. Back in the day when I started, it was forty thousand dollars. Right. I, that I was in debt from yeah. college, so I needed to pay the debt and save money. And by the time I saved it, it became sixty, yeah. and then it became eighty, yeah. and then it became a hundred. And and it's, it's the perpetual game of saving. But you, if you save your money. It, it makes it has interest, you know, get an investment advisor who will invest that, yes, that money yes. and eventually you get to it and technology gets better. It's not going to be that. I know people say it's going to disappear. Yeah. And I think it'd be a little while before that goes it, anywhere. It's, it's, yeah. it's not going to disappear. It's just going to get a little bit older. Yeah. But it will still be there. The experience will be amazing. I am sure for anybody who wants to go and it, it, might, it might get cheaper. Yeah. In, yes. later as I well. So you don't know. It's being done more now. and more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the um, the, what the pictures that are coming out now are amazing because obviously they're coming out in in very very high quality. Um, and what I think I think probably most of us, those that that are sort of interested in Titanic, we want to see more. Yeah. You know, that's that's the, that's yeah. that's the only thing we we yeah. we've all got yeah. such a thirst. We just want more and more. Um. I think my only problem I, I have with it, not, not a problem as such, but, but knowing what pictures come from when, because there's so many pictures of the front of Titanic, yeah. um, especially on the internet, wherever you, wherever you look, yeah. to actually know when that was done, whether it was done last year or the year before, the year before, the year before, the year before. So it's sort of like, uh, that, but um, that, That's why we have Sauli who com gives you the comparisons year by year. Yes. And I think... Um, I think for me, Instagram has been brilliant for that because I've been able to keep an eye on Ocean Gate um, and, and post pictures and things and try and keep up to date with that. Um, but yeah, no, I think, um, do, I mean, for yourself, do you do, do you do quite a lot of talks and things like that? Or, or is it not really something that you, you do a lot of, or is it just go mad around about April time or? It goes mad around April time. And uh, it, it did definitely went mad after you visit the rack. Yeah, I mean, uh, you are. I mean, you are one of those privileged few. Yes. Um, and as you said, your your sort of um, so the first Mexican to have been to the rec site. First Mexican female to go to the rec site. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that must have been quite a privilege and, and quite an amazing thing. I mean, I saw pictures of you afterwards, yes. um, <laughs> hugging everybody yes. and, and all the I'm rest of it. I'm yeah, I, I can see that. And I, yeah. I, you, can, you can feel the emotion that must have been coming through. So do you want to just now, now we've sort of know a little bit of the background, do you want to give us a little bit of information about um, maybe what, what did you have to prepare before you went down? Because obviously you can't just have a full English breakfast <laughs> um before before going down is there is there certain dietary things that you have to be careful of or you know obviously you've got a two and a half hour dive <laughs> you know so what what sort of things have, have, have you got there that that might be interesting to know for, for those people that are going to be inside the submersible they ask you not to have dinner for example to start eating early um 
I honestly had my cup of coffee in the morning, but I wore diapers to be very wide open here. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. I didn't want to be thirsty, so I had my coffee and wore my diapers. But they, they do recommend that you do not drink or, or have anything to eat, uh, you know, since the night before, and that you do go to the bathroom the next morning. Okay. Um, the, the, the submersible has a toilet, so if you do okay. have to go, yes, it is, uh, it, the, the toilet is right by the window. No, you cannot just sit at the toilet the entire dive. Right. <laughs> it acts as a seat throughout okay. the dive, and then if anybody needs to go to the bathroom, they, they'll put a, a, a privacy window. It's a privacy curtain. It's just okay. a, something we hang, like a, a sheet. Yes. And then you open up this, the, the, the seat, and it's, it's in the, it's, it looks like a toilet. Um, right. okay. And then you have, obviously, contraptions you can use for men and women, to be precise. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, cool. You know, you have a bag, you, you pee on your bag, and you do whatever you need to do. You yeah. Put it in the bag and you put it back in, in another bag, and you put it back in. So, technically, you can go to the bathroom in, in, the, uh, in the submersible. Okay. It's a very public thing because people can hear you. Yes. Uh, so you don't necessarily want to do that. But you usually do not eat anything the night before. And you okay. don't drink anything the next morning. Um, you have to get weighed um, in the morning. Everybody has to get weighed with whatever they bring in. They allow you a little bag with socks and a book and whatever you want to, you know, a little backpack with things, a camera and things like that. Um, we usually wake up really early in the morning. The, the weather, we tend to start early. If the weather allows, you start at 4 a.m. Right. Uh, so early wake up call, you have to get weighed. There's a, a briefing with everybody. The entire ship has to be at the briefing, whether you dive or not. Right. Um, they, they, want people, they want to know where everybody will be during the dive and what, what role do you have. Ocean Gate allows... Uh, mission specialists to be crew. So if you have, you're very good at communications and you already know how to work it, then you do the communications. You want to be in the Zodiac. You want to take pictures. There's different jobs for everybody. They, they have you busy pretty much all day. Every, you're entertained the entire time. Right. You just not right. okay. um, in That's lovely about Ocean Gate. I love it because you don't get bored at all and you learn a lot. Uh, do you think it's working... best that do you think that's best that you're kept busy so that you're you're not left to panic? <laughs> no, I don't think it's panic. It's just, I guess I, think I guess I you're looking at that they have you busy so you don't panic. Yeah. But it, no, it's it's instead of it's a long day. Instead yeah. of just watching, uh, you're working alongside somebody uh, in media, taking yes. doing interviews, taking pictures. Yeah. You're working alongside. Yeah. Uh, you know, PH Nartole, he's not in the yeah. stuff, and he's telling you what's going on and what they're seeing, and you're working people in communication. You, you have a role, you're part of the expedition. Yes. You're yeah. not just an extra person going to the gym. You can go to the gym if you want to, but if you want to participate and be an active participant, you're allowed to do that, which is great. So let's, let's say we do the briefing. Everybody has a job. Everybody knows where they're going to be. Um, 5 a.m. This is 4 a.m. Around 5 a.m. They start loading and unloading things. People have to be in the water. People need to get dressed for whatever they need to get mm. dressed. And there's a lot of movement in, in on deck and preparations for loading the sub. The sub gets loaded around 6 a.m. There's pictures, interviews, all of that yeah. at the beginning. The deck is uh, is is empty with people on 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 zodiacs in the water and support people all around. Um, people that get in the sub, uh, they, you know, the dome has to close. People help in closing the dome. Uh, it, the sub sits on a platform that sinks right. to about 20 feet. So the procedure of getting in the sub and actually starting to do testing and getting yourself to 20 feet to dive. Yes. It takes a while. Yeah. It's like you're getting the rocket and you're going to be there for a couple of hours, right? right. So in the right. rocket, if you're one of the lucky ones inside the submersible, you, the, the pilot takes you through all the checks internally. What happens if this happens? What happens? What, what to do if he passes away or, you know, he has a heart attack? Who yes. drives? Yes. How do you drive? Right. You know, yeah. what, do you, what do you say? How does the radio work? 
Um, but to be you honest, up, you're, 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 so you in other words, you're, you're doing sort of two hours before we've even started yeah. to go down. I so mean, you, because you suddenly yeah. think, because I, I mean, for me, I, you can think that you just, you just get in the sub and, and then it's go? two hours down. That's no, no, it, no. two and a half hours and it's all over, you're down, two and a half hours up and you're done. No. So it's clearly not, not as straightforward as just two and a half hours down. You, you've no. got a lot of stuff to do before you even think yeah. of going down. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of checks to go around. You have to mm. check comps. You have to check everybody's ready, readiness of everybody. You have to check that all, you know, the people outside are checking the sub, that the sub is in vacuum, that oxygen levels are good, that everybody inside the sub feels comfortable to that, that everybody outside the sub is comfortable for the operation and ready. So we go through several iterations of, mm. um, of checks. And also, is, is everybody a go? We go through... Are you a go? Are you a go? Are yeah. you a go? Is everybody ready? Yeah. Prepare them. Yeah. They, they are very safe in their procedures. Yes. Um, and they do have a system of, of risk that if people are tired and that, you know, they put a, a risk uh, metrics in, into that particular diet, how right. many people are in the okay. club. You usually in the submersible, you have a pilot, a co-pilot or a Titanic expert. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in a scientist and, and two people are going to help out. The pilot has you busy in, inside. Yes. He will literally tell you, give you the radio and, and tell you what to say. So you're helping. Okay. If he's busy, with his hands are busy, he'll hand you the radio and say, tell them okay or whatever. Right. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask you actually with that. So obviously this, this uh, is an exploration of Titanic but it's not to do with removing anything, disturbing anything. It's, it's purely to um, assess the Titanic. Is that really what it's all about? And also not just the Titanic, but what's going on around Titanic? Is Co that sort of... Co correct, yeah. We're not allowed to, to... I mean, I wouldn't imagine even touching it. Uh, all, all missions have a scientific objective. Yes. Um, a lot of it, yes, he's taking pictures, but he's taking pictures of corals, mm. of mm. the size of the corals. We have lasers where we can do some measurements of certain things, of like uh, the, 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 the nose of Titanic. Has I'm a glad very you mentioned large... that, actually, about the lasers, because a lot of pictures you see, these lines, and I have had people say, oh, there's a, there's a mark on the, on the picture. But it's it's the laser, and obviously that's what. So they use that to measure whatever, like you were mentioning there. Yeah, the two green lasers that you see sometimes in video is ten centimeters apart. Okay. And if we move the sub in a certain way to measure a, a gap or a coral, or it, 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 you can you can measure it with that. It gives you an idea of perspective of of, uh, of size of certain things. Okay. So, okay. so you took, it took you two and a half hours to get down? Yeah, well, we haven't even sunk yet. We're still in the sub with <laughs> doing, doing safety checks. Uh, let's say that they finally submerged the platform to 20 feet. Okay. You go through all the checks again, propellers, sonar, communications, mm. the whole thing. You make sure it works. Then you dive. Okay. So when you dive and, and go down, it takes about two hours to go down. You can go down okay. in less. Right. Um, my dive in particular had a little bit extra weight on the on the sub. Okay. So we, we went down in an hour and a half. Oh, okay, um, really. And, and we went down in a spiral. Really. It was funny, funny to see in terms of the uh, uh, the controls. You can tell the controls how you're moving, and if you can right. read the controls, we were going on a spiral, and we were head down too. Right. We were not okay. going like that. We were head wow. down. And you could feel it with yeah. the position of the sub. And what do we do on the way down? Um, we, we do a lot of interviews, but we also look out the window. Yes. Um, outside the window is, is a dance of, of little critters and things flashing. Right, and okay. Going by and, I mean, it's... So it's, it's not completely black? It is completely black, but we put the lights on. We right, the so you can... On. Right, okay. So you can actually see things coming by, stopping, and then flying out. Right, we, okay. We, we sometimes also uh, put a, a little light in the dome, and you, right. you close your eyes and you wait for critters to come, and then you open your eyes, you see all of them like shine right okay. outside the dome. 
um, it's, it's actually really, and there's some of them that try to stay in the dome, oh, kind hungry. of like talking to you, <laughs> and, and they can't, they can't keep up because you're going faster than them, they, they just, right. so it's, it's actually, a lot of fun to go down and then yeah, as yeah. soon as you start seeing you have to communicate with the surface every 15 minutes or so mm. um, some of the experiments we do mid water is um, we release some of the weight the weights are uh, in sandbags so we release okay. a couple of sandbags which trap uh, it is the way they function to to cover a bottle to okay. trap water so if you release one bag the, the top cover goes on. If you release the other bag, the bottom cover goes on. Okay. And it traps the water in it. Right. And that's being used for eDNA of different different uh, uh, depths uh, to Titanic. Oh, and then okay. we also do it at the bottom. Right. We have two, okay. two bottles on each side. Right. Or two bottles total. And that's the kind of experiment we do. We also take, uh, as soon as you land around debris fields, we try to do this, the, the submersible has legs that are hollow. Okay. And we, we try to take some mud out of the ground. Yes. So they can also uh, do some experiments with it and, and see what kind of critters are, are, are on around. Right, I right. say so yes, of yeah, course. Cool. Right. And then obviously as soon as you land as well, and if you start seeing debris, uh, I, we noticed every piece of metal pretty much has some coral on it. Okay. So you have to take pictures of every piece of coral that you see. Right. To try to see the, the, the ecology of Titanic. So they have you busy all the time. I mean, this, if you have a scientist on board, he's going to be looking out the window saying, yeah. take a picture of that, take a picture of that, take a picture of yeah. that. Uh, so, so obviously you've got, so now you're down at the bottom. Um, so obviously you are desperate to see... <laughs> Titanic. Um, so, obviously, you, you you don't you don't instantly see it. I assume. No, no, so no. I assume you have to go towards it. <laughs> so, is there a distance? I mean, are they quite a way away from from the Titanic, and you have to work your way towards it, or how does that work? Or do you literally land right next to it? How does that yeah, sort of? That's another thing that um, you, you don't really understand until you're there. You you don't yeah. land in front of the bow. It's mm. um, it's it's the, you're you're two hours going down at the mercy of the currents, and sometimes there's yeah, course, yeah, yeah. So they release. You try to make an uh, an attempt to see where the currents are going, and you get dropped uh, on top somewhere in the middle of the stern and the bow. Right. Uh, okay. But the current can take you five hundred meters away, right. to the front or to the back, or so when you right. land. You really do not know uh, where it is until right. until the, the GPS of yes, the sub communicates with the surface. Right. right. They give you a position of where you landed. Um, we have the famous National Geographic map from 2010, the one yes. in black and white from, yes. from the National Geographic magazine. Yep. 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 We have that map in, in squares. Right. So, we literally go A1, B1, B2. Okay, B2, right. And, okay. and it's like playing battleship right. when we get to the right. bottom. Okay. It's what square are you in? And well, I mean, 98. And uh, well, so how far is 98 from Titanic? <laughs> yes. You know that if it's three, three squares, you're, you know, X meters away. So and where did you land? So where did you land? I actually landed one square away from Titanic. Oh, really? <laughs> 300 <laughs> meters away it was very clear from our landing that we were in debris right. fields right okay right away yeah um there were a lot of rocks in the bottom right it, okay it was cold okay. somebody actually really right that, um, you know there's there's a lot of rocks yeah and somebody said no that's not rocks that that's cold yeah and, wow. and, and i think that moment for us we're like oh we're in debris yeah. fields we're okay. like so close. Phenomenal. And yeah. so we but, have to take directions from the surface. Uh, you know, once you stop and there's propellers are not, they're, they're not uh, running. Yes. It's a clear communication with the surface back yes. and forth. And they tell you where you are, you know, range and bearing to Titanic and, and you start navigating towards a, a big piece. 
if you're in the pre field, you're starting to see a lot of things and you get distracted by all the little things okay. that you're seeing. Imagine, yes. So you're trip to a big piece of Titanic um, is, 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 uh, is very entertaining. It's, it's, you're seeing things, you're on yes. the track, you're feeling, yeah. you're feeling the disaster, you're seeing the, the impact. Mm. Um, the, the humanity of things, you, you really start yes. understanding where you are. Yeah, I mean, um, it must be a bit of an emotional roller coaster because you're, you're, you're being a scientist, yeah. but you're, you're, also, you're also Renata who wants to see Titanic. <laughs> and, you know, you've waited a long time for that. So yeah. there must be a lot of emotions going on, being professional. Yeah. Which you need to be all the time. Yeah. But also that emotion of, I've been waiting a long time to get this point. <laughs> but you also have to understand, you don't know if you're going to be close to the stern. Or you're yes. Be close to the bow. Everybody wants to see the yeah. bow at the end of Everybody the day. Everybody wants to see the, the front, if, don't they? If the stern is closer, you go to the stern. Right. Because okay. it's closer. You don't want to get either the two pieces of Titanic are... So far away from, each, away from each other, right? Away from each other. So, so to be honest, if you're if you're if you're at one end, that's the bit you'll only be seeing. If you're the other end, or do you, do you can, can would you actually get from one to the other, or would it really only be, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna get the opportunity to see both. You bits. can try, right? You only have four hours. They they they. Right, that's, just, that, that's your space. Right, okay. They want you to come back to the surface uh, during the daytime to be safe. Yes. Um, there's no recoveries at night. Uh, we're, we, we, we don't like them. <laughs> it's just better to do it all during the day. Yes. It's a long day. People are tired yeah. and attentive. Yeah. So we want everybody being attentive. So we try to keep the dives to four hours in the bottom. Right. So okay. two hours okay. down, two hours up, four hours at the bottom, and then the, attach two hours in the front and, or an hour in the front and yes. an hour in the back for, yes, for deployment and employment. Yeah. Right. So, yes, so cool. that's. That's it's a long time, actually. Hours. It's a long, long day, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, so you want to return up to the surface by 4 p.m. Right. Because okay. by 6, it gets yeah. dark. Yes, yes, of um, course. And then you're hungry and whatever. You're not cold. One thing about the uh, Titan is that is carbon fiber. It's okay. The first of a kind carbon fiber submersible. And it's not cold. You're in the t-shirt. Okay. When you get on. On the dome, which is some titanium, the dome is cold. Okay. But I don't, you know, obviously you, you wear socks because you, you touch. <clears throat> yes. You touch the dome. Yes. But most of the time you're not cold at all. Okay. That, so the other thing I'm going to ask you is how, how much viewing area do you actually have? Because obviously um, if you, you sort of wonder, you know, like, is, the, is it, is it tiny or is it, is it big? Is it? Is it? How much viewing area do you have, and how clear is that viewing area, if you like? That's immersible, and I don't want to say incorrect numbers, but from what I remember, ish, yeah, ish, yeah, it's about twelve feet long. Yes. Inside, huh? Right. Inside might be longer with yes. the dome, but the the main area is about twelve feet, and then you have the dome, which adds another three feet. Yes. Yeah. No, you can you can actually be on the dome, like you can curl okay. the dome. Right. It's that big. Right. Um, and then the area, the five feet across, must be maybe three feet. Right. I am, I am five one, and I can actually stand up in the sub. Right. With my, okay. with my head down, <laughs> uh, up to my neck. Okay. So I, okay. I, I have to walk around like this. I can actually stand up in the in the sub. Okay, you right. Can stretch your legs from one side to the other. Yeah. Um, yes. So you can do, you can stretch like this. Yeah. It's very, it's very comfortable. The viewing area, which is on the dome, is a window of about nine inches. It's okay. the largest window of any deep submersible. Yes, because we be say normally they can be only about six inches or something, can't they, or something that right. the other ones have had, but this one's it's, obviously bigger. It's big. Yeah. The, the window is big. Yeah. Three people can look out the okay. window, same window. Three people. Yes. At the same time. Yes. You might have one up here and the <laughs> other one here, but three people can be in that window looking out. 
Yes. Well, four is a little bit too much, but yes. <laughs> you, you might be able to fit four looking at If you're desperate, you will. Three, yes. So one person or two is extremely comfortable to see. You can see extremely well. Actually, sometimes the view from the dome is much better than the view from the, from, from the cameras. Right. Uh, the, the back of the sub, the opposite end of the window, is a big, huge 20-inch TV. Right. Might be at least 20 inches, if not more. But the 20-inch TV is the ca shows you what the cameras are, are seeing. Right. So if you're not looking out the window, you can look out at the back where the, the pilot is driving off the cameras. Right, okay. Which are pointing forward, but he's driving backwards. Right, he's okay. Driving, he yes. himself is backwards, driving forward. Um, but he can, that's what he uses to drive. Sometimes we, we give him the window. Right. Sometimes we lend it to him, but sometimes we don't. So, and, um, so, what, so when they've got, you've got there... What's your reaction now? Because obviously you do get to see the, the yeah. bow. You, you get to see well, it. I, um, I got to see the bow, but um, yes. my, my first touch of Titanic of Big P's was the back of the bow. Okay. At, at the cut. Okay. okay. Right, um, yeah. And it was very jagged. Um, you, can, you, you, you can see boilers uh, underneath, but it's, it's nothing okay. too clear. Right, okay. We, we took a boat boat around the, the sub and we were going to go from back to front and we decided no we want to approach we want to have that approach to Titanic now that we're here yes. we want to approach it from the front so we yeah. drove fast <laughs> quickly we, we kept the wreck on one side we drove quickly we made a turnaround and then approached it from the front so yeah. we could have that sonar and window yes. from the front the the sand around Titanic is is full of corals, very big, large corals. Yeah. Is you can see that there's a lot of life, yeah. and then as you approach it, is all of a sudden is this shadow coming out of nowhere. Yeah, and and is is huge and yeah. it's big. Yeah, uh, and that's what I was impressed about. I was uh, my first reaction was the size of it, the sheer yeah. size. Of it. And and the fact that I had made it uh, for yeah. me, I'm like I'm, I'm I'm here. I'm seeing it with my <laughs> own eyes. I couldn't believe it myself that I was like, oh, we made it. Yeah. Um, Do you find that well, you still get emotional? I mean, you you're emotional while you're talking about it. Yeah. So do you, do you still? I mean. When you're when you're sort of on your own, you know, other times when you're just maybe sitting in, um, doing bank work and. <laughs> All of a sudden, you just you just get this flashback. I, um, I, I cry when I'm on my own and not in, in front of a camera, but I do <laughs> cry when, when I see when I see footage of the actual. Yeah. When I go through the footage that we got, um, I I cry. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's part part of it now is the memory. Yes. And, yes. Uh, how I'm how I'm gonna get myself back there. And, and the other portion is the same emotion that I had before I went to actually see it. It was every time I saw footage of Titanic, mm -hmm. for me, it was very emotional. It was, um, it was some attachment that I'm sure some people watching have as well. Yeah. That you just yeah. cannot explain. You just see that beautiful ship and, and you just cry. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's almost like he's, he's standing there like he's about to sail off. Yeah. Standing tall and pretty um is is huge so i don't think it's going to disappear anytime no. soon in my view so when you when you went up the front obviously the front did you actually go over the top to see uh for instance the the wheelhouse area and the mm -hmm. the telemotor and, and that sort of thing did you get to see that as well yeah well first you have to take pictures with about yeah. right? so yeah. it took about 15 minutes of our hours it took it took about an hour and a half to get to the bow. Okay. So all the debris field and navigating yeah. and getting to actual peace took about an hour and a half or right. two. Hours. Okay. So uh, yeah. it's a lot, a lot of navigating in the water before you actually get yes. there. Then you take a few minutes to take pictures with the bow. Mm. We, one of our goals was to take pictures of one of the uh, anchors. Okay, and, yes. And 
and recognize if you can still read the yeah. name of the maker and the anchor. So we took a lot of time taking those pictures, measurements, yeah. uh, clear pictures, etc. So, so that was one of our objectives yes. in our dive. Which you did manage. Which we did manage. Yes, well done. We also uh, were the first ones who took the 8K camera. So we had to make yeah. sure we took some 8K footage. Yeah. And that was also uh, my dive. Yes. We... We, we started rising slowly on the bow, and, and we just went slowly, piece by piece. Um, we obviously went on the, on the starboard side, uh, taking, taking different views. Um, we, we, we wanted to see all the windows from the back, so as we were going on top of it, we actually got off a little bit of the wreck to see the wall, the yes. wall of... of um, of windows that you can you can see the corals growing even on one more on one side yeah. than the other yeah. which is yeah. probably a result of the currents yeah. of, of one side from one side to the other and then we got to the bridge um actually to, to the promenade deck and in the promenade deck we took a few more pictures saw the officers quarters yeah. and yes. then from there we actually took a little u-turn and went to the bridge uh we went to the left and then we went to to see the bridge so we got to see the bridge quite a bit um and then we went all we started uh back marconi room My, the uh the grand staircase uh in the grand staircase you can actually see the the chandeliers still yeah, hanging yeah which is pretty incredible yeah it's a big it's a big hole i thought the sub fit in it fits in there but Nobody wanted to take the sub in there, so <laughs> I think, it's, okay. it's fascinating to think, you know, that that's where, you know, when you look at the telemotor that's there, that that's where my great-grandfather stood. Yes, I know, know that. And, it, and, and it, it's a strange thing to have that connection, like with yourself even, you know, the fact that you've been where he was, yeah. you know, and it's quite, yeah. quite, um, it's quite an amazing thing, really. Yeah. Um, and if you had the opportunity, would you go back? Titanic? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to to save money already. To oh, really? Wow. Um, I'm I'm trying to train myself to be a submersible pilot. So. Uh, oh really? Yes. Yeah, so, 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 You're going for the whole hole now. To go get a job. Yes. I'm okay. I'm working for my next dive. As I said, Ocean Gate allowed me to go back as crew. <laughs> um. They've been training me for several years on the operations, so yes. I'm, I'm going to be lucky enough to, to go work with Rory Golden at the, yes. in the dive operations over there. But uh, I'm going to go back and, and, and try to get myself at some point um, to pay for another dive. Yeah. And like I said, if you don't have the money now, start saving. I'm starting to save, and then you and I can go in 20 years. Yes. What I'll have to do is I need to have a I might have to is have a word with Rory Golden and we'll have to get him on a on a live as well. Um, but um, I, I'm just looking at the time. The time's oh. actually ticked right away. It's really it shocking. Went by you wouldn't, you'd be surprised how quickly. I just tell you the telemotor is probably one of the most impressive things yes. on the planet. Yes. I know people want to see the bell, but the telemotor is is copper. I yes. It's copper. It's a right. metal that yeah, things don't attach yeah. to. It. So yeah. when the lights hit it, it's gold. Right, so okay. It, it, there's nothing on it. It's clean. It's beautiful. It's amazing, um, isn't it? It's like a monument. Yeah. Sort of, um... But then that's it. After that, we, we went off the port side, and then we, we had to come up. And, yeah. And that, that was basically the dive. So when you came up, obviously, you've got to, you, you can't just get out of the, the submersible, well, I'm it assuming. You've got to have... Hours. To go up, I mean, you have to release weights and all of that. Um, I, I honestly, right before we took off, we, we, I kept my my ten seconds of silence for Titanic. I yes. did a countdown myself, and and was my moment, my quiet moment with Titanic yeah. before we said goodbye. It took two hours to come up. We uh, we ate our sandwiches. You know, we had a picnic yeah. in the water. Yeah. We did some interviews. I was trying not to cry, to be honest. It was, it was too many people in the sub yeah. asking the questions of how do I feel. Uh, you can see it a little bit in the BBC documentary, but yes. I, I, I just, I couldn't really, I, I was still in shock. Yes. 
And um, so I decided to play a game of poker. That way nobody would ask me questions. <laughs> so I took my cards out and we started to play poker. You, you get to the surface and they recover you in about an hour. Yes, um, yes. And, and you get out and then it's basically shower and dinner and, and debrief and, and go to sleep. Yeah. I think, I think the whole story has been absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've, we've run out of time, really, to carry on with it, however much I'd like. I know when I did my last, um, <clears throat> my last two, which was only meant to be one, ended up being two. But um, no, I, I, all I can say is thank you very much for, for being part of this. I really appreciate the fact that you've been willing to give your time up to, to come on. Because and, and, I, I know there's been lots of people coming in and coming out. And uh, this will be on, on YouTube as well, and, and hopefully a little bit on Instagram as well. But at least then people can come and see and watch it again, maybe when they've got time to. Obviously, people have been... The uh, rest of England's probably in bed. And... Um, <laughs> And uh, but no, we're, again, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on and to be willing to do it. Um, and hopefully, I'll tag you in in some links and things like that. So um, definitely, and follow. You know, expedition year three starting uh, next week. Yes, or no, I think in two weeks. It's, it's not far away now. It's really quick. Right it's now. really near, isn't it? And, really, uh, really near. Uh, so follow, follow Ocean Gate expeditions. Uh, they'll they'll be posting stuff and all of us will be posting stuff as well and hopefully yes. you guys oh, yeah. Help. yeah i'll put plenty i'll put plenty of stuff on that'll be, that'll be <laughs> people get bored eventually i don't know whether they will or not but um uh, i say there's been lots of people here that have been putting little messages on and and um waving and saying hi and that and lots of questions and bits and pieces but um obviously we really appreciate you being on and and being through live instagram so uh, so we'll, we'll probably I'll have another live Instagram at some point. Uh, there's a few people that I've got lined up that that have been willing to to put up with me for for, for an hour, um, but we look forward to that. But maybe we can do that, do one with Rory. Uh, well, actually, on, on the ship, if we if we dock, we have internet, so we should be able to do that would something be cool. on the dock. I'll have to keep up uh, keeping contact with you and if that's if i can work that one out i'll certainly do a, try and do a live instagram with you on board that would be amazing okay so um but so i'll say goodbye for now okay um and thanks again renata for everything no, and uh, really do appreciate you coming on and uh it's look forward to speaking you and... yeah no it's been it's been good it's been good fun and we've enjoyed it i've enjoyed it anyway <laughs> learning some more things that i never knew before so it's been brilliant <laughs> All right, then, okay. you take care, and we'll speak to you again soon. Yep. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.